Today I want to talk to you a little bit about data warehouses, how they came to be, the kind of data that is put in data warehouses and how, um, how data warehousing is approached generally in the enterprise. Because basically prior to data warehouses, data was, the data reports were all run out of the native systems. So if you wanted accounting data, you went to the accounting system. And if you wanted HR data, you went to whatever HR system was managing their data. Usually these systems were in-house systems and the data formats in each one were disparate and sometimes discouraging in such a way that it was very difficult to combine the data to get any meaningful information out of them. You had analysts that you paid a lot of money really to sit around and just crunch data all day just so that managers could get answers. So about 1990s, the executives and corporations began to be concerned with the massive amount of data they had and the lack of information that they had uh, available to them. So they started looking, uh, you know, business started evolving toward the idea of putting the data all in one place. And so that became the birth of the data warehouse as we know it today. So the data warehouse is a generally a logical collection of information gathered from, you know, operations around the company. So you, you have bits and pieces of data that the IT department will actually take and massage and combine for the analysts. And so the accounting data had logical connections and they worked through things so that you could connect it with the HR data and the supply chain data and the uh, customer relationship data. All of those pieces of data would be combined into one and be a lot easier uh, to work through. Well, of course, to do that, there were quite a few challenges. In fact, there was two schools of thought that generally came into being during that time. Uh, one was by Bill Inman, the other one was by Ralph Kimball. Now, Bill Inman believed that you should have a single data warehouse that encompassed the entire corporation. And this data warehouse then could be broken up into smaller data marts. But the, the main difference between Bill Inman and Ralph Kimball was Bill Inman believed that you should have the data warehouse in a relational format and this relational format would be at least to the third normal form. And then when the data marts were created from it, the data marts would be dimensional. In other words, they would use cubing technology to make the drill through and the ability to see and analyze the data much easier. Now this made certain amounts of logical sense. It was a lot of work and the burden with I, to IT for this type of a data warehouse was tremendously large. So you had then Ralph Kimball come along and he says, well, you should start with smaller data marts that these smaller data marts would encapsulate subject matter that the business needed. And that as the business matured and these data marts matured, then you could combine data marts into larger data warehouses. But starting small would enable the business to understand the type of data they were working with. And then when it came time to combine the data marts into a larger data warehouse, the understanding could be brought forward and built into the data warehouse. Now, to make this even easier, what, what Kimball said is instead of having a fully relational database and every table that you add to the data warehouse would have to be linked into this relational schema. Instead, they, he created it in what they called a star schema or a snowflake schema where you had basically a center fact table where all of the facts would be embedded in there and the facts that needed to be combined one to another could be combined with this fact table. Um, and then when you ran the data from the data warehouse, you could choose data from one table to the next, and it would understand then with the star schema, how to get from the one table to the other table and what tables related to each other and how. So Ralph Kimball's idea tended to be a little bit more popular seemingly because 
it was a lot easier for IT. What you have here on the screen now is, is a model of what the modern data warehouse looks like. It. So you have internal databases and you know marketing, sales, inventory, billing. You could include supply chain management uh, and customer relationship management data to that as well. You might have external data being added to it also. Um, so then the data warehouse model for Ralph Kimball would be that all of it would be combined with a star schema in the in the middle with data marts being broken out from it in order to um, give the ability of just marketing to drill through and get, look at their data or inventory, the supply chain people being able to look into the inventory data easier. And so you could explore and data mine in a smaller data set in this way. Um, and until a smaller data mart was made, everybody could still go into the larger data warehouse uh, to find their data. So in order to accomplish this, there's a lot of data scrubbing that needs to take place. In other words, data from different relational systems around the enterprise may not have the same standards. In other words, the accounting data and how it is handled might be a little bit different than the supply chain uh, data or the, you know, the HR data might be a bit different in how they uh, talk about the people and the information about the people in the enterprise might be different than the supply chain data where they talk about the procurement analyst and the, the people that run in, that work in the procurement side of the business um, that you would see in supply chain. So there's a certain amount of data scrubbing that has to take place to make these, make sure that these um, pieces of data can, can join with each other. So what this basically looks like is, I've kind of put an example on the screen. Um, in sales, we have Pat Burton. So Pat Burton is highlighted in bold there. We look down to customer service and customer service, when they related to Pat Burton, uh, put her in there as Patty Burton and spelled the last name differently. Well, billing then got into the act and when they put their system together, they had in, in fact two entries for Pat Burton, one as Trisha, because that was her nickname, and one with her full name, Patricia Burton. And so what do you do with all this? Well, you, you have to clean up the data and have one version of the truth, so to speak. And so what in this example, what they did is they decided to take her full name and then they have to create links that create that link the customers in the sales table with the customers in the customer service table and the customers in the billing table to know who Patricia Burton is in all of those three tables. And that's the kind of data cleanup and standardization that has to take place in order to make a data warehouse actually function. Okay, so this data scrubbing then, you know, we, we showed the example of a, a person's name. Well, there's a lot of other different things too. There's redundant records, there's missing keys, um, key, rec key fields, there's missing or erroneous uh, relationships or references, there's inaccurate data. All of those things have to be cleaned up in time. And frankly, it's not 100% the responsibility of IT to do that. Understanding information belongs to the business, the data belongs to the business, the systems belong to IT, IT can only do so much. And so when there's a missing or redundant piece of data, the onus is really on the business to work with IT to get that data cleaned up so that it can be put in the data warehouse and get accurate information coming out. So organizational data, it comes in structure, uh, da databases all over the company. There's also unstructured data like voicemails and phone calls, text messages, video clips that could be put in the data warehouse. Um, there's a data explosion really taking place in, in the number of things that we call data today that before today really wasn't data. Like in, in the days where typewriters ruled, the secretaries or, or people that are off, called office assistants today 
would type up a message and, and it would be on a piece of paper. The paper would be put in a file cabinet somewhere and hopefully you'd be able to find it when you really needed it. Well, today emails become digital data that could be captured and put in a data warehouse. So the amount of data, because we're pretty much all digital in all of our corporations, the amount of data can literally be um, just exploding as you start considering all the places you can get data from. And frankly, if you get audited by the government, if you work for government contracts, they could subpoena literally all of your email records, for example, and you have to have a ready source of being able to produce that in order to meet those auditing uh, requirements, okay? So improving the quality of business decisions really is a direct impa impact on cost and revenue. Business uh, BI or business intelligence enables the business users to retrieve data and make it consistent reliable, understandable, and easily manipulated. The, the challenge is getting from all these disparate data, data systems and getting all the data out of them in order to make a consistent data warehouse that can be tackled and get to the point of being reliable, consistent, understandable, and easily manipulated. And probably the hardest one to get to is this where it's easily manipulated and combined with other data sets. Uh, that's probably by far the, the biggest challenge. So business intelligence can start answering the tough questions. So the question, why are sales below target? Well, because we sold less in the Western region. Well, let's look at the rest Western region. Why did we sell less in that region? Because sales of product X dropped. Well, why did products X sales drop? Because customer complaints increased. That's interesting. Why did they increase? Um, because late deliveries went up. In other words, they had a supply chain problem. And so the original question of why are sales below target is answered because say, late deliveries went up on a particular product. Now, the ability to drill into the data to answer questions like this is really the domain of business intelligence. And you can't get to business intelligence unless you have all your data in one place, which leads you to a data warehouse. So data warehousing became very, very critical starting in about the 1990s and remains critical today. The data warehouses have just become more sophisticated since the 1990s when they were first invented. We have data lakes now where unstructured data gets put and is then queried out by di very different uh, query language tools. So if you liked what you heard today, hit the like button for me. And please subscribe to the channel so we can grow and get you better content every day. Thanks.